Okay, uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's wonderful to see all of you here. I'd like to call the uh, meeting of the uh, Town of Fairfield Human Services Commission to order. And uh, all now engage in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Stand. Can. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Liberty, justice, justice for all. Okay, we uh, we now have roll call, and I'll begin. Uh, I'm Martin Schwartz, otherwise known as Marty Schwartz. Cheryl Jones. Sheila Tessie. Glenn Palmer. Carolyn Turkey. Julie DeMarco. Mary Ellen Gavin. Joe Krejci. Thank you very much. Katrina. Katrina Cash. I'm. Oh, um, in via Zoom. Okay, and actually you're sounding really good. Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad it's coming across. <laughs> no, it is definitely. Uh, so you've all received a copy of the May minutes um, and I'm sure you read them thoroughly. Are there any uh, corrections or adjustments to those minutes? Not hearing any, we'll entertain a motion to approve uh, the main minutes as presented. I move to approve the minutes as presented. Okay, second. A second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. okay. Uh, first, Selectman uh, Gerber should be here any time now, uh, but I think until that happens, uh, let us move ahead with uh, the agenda. And uh, are, is there any new business anybody would like to bring to the floor? Okay. Good. Sorry, did you want? I had one. Do you have I just probably something new. Maybe you want to do too, uh, Julie. It was just I wanted just to remind folks that friends of the center are having their cocktail party again this year. I don't know if that's what you. Were no, but I'm glad you remember that. Uh, it's September fourth, and it's down at Penfield Two, the one that doesn't have to be rebuilt. Yeah, is that the Jackie, Jackie Durrell? And um, those, uh, a couple of us went last year and it was very well run. They did a beautiful job. So I would just encourage people, if you can, it's from uh, five to seven on uh, September 4th. What Wednesday. exactly is it? It's a cocktail party to benefit the Bigelow Center. Oh. And it's sponsored by the friends of the Bigelow Center. Nice. And uh, I wonder if you pass it around. Yeah, you. sure. I mean, uh, take them and uh, oh, they, well, I have a couple because uh, the president, well, I keep forgetting her name. She is so good. Uh, but if you have a chance, uh, as I mentioned, it was very well done last year. What is the cost of that? I think it was $100 last year. Is that here? It's not there. This is more like a save the date thing, oh, okay. uh, Monty, but I think that's what it was last year. Great. I'm just going to mention that um, the town is opening up the Charter Revision Commission. So we're going to be interested in serving on that and uh, participating in suggestions and going through that process. Please let the first elected's office know. Just some background on that. So that, that's happened a few times and they've opened it, but they haven't really revised the charter. Is that? Well, they, there was a, yeah, they had a process. Um, we, the town had a process um, a couple of years ago with how you hired a consultant, did a lot of work on it, but um, it, didn't get, it didn't pass on the ballot because it was just one item rather than, you know, rather than the ability to, you know, say yay or nay to all these different changes. It was just one and it was voted down. So a lot of that work will still apply, but um, this is an opportunity to take another look at it and, and participate again. Right. And the expectation, perhaps, is that they'd be looking at various parts of it and voting on the individual parts rather yeah. than yeah. talking about it. Yep. Okay. Right. Okay. Are there parts that affect you guys or what things that the commission should look at? There are. Um, one, of the, you know, one of the basic changes was making language in it um, people first instead of the, you know, the disabled people with disabilities. Um, we had a lot of discussion about um, whether or not youth services should be in the charter. Um, i trying to think of what the other big issue was. Oh, and, and then just descriptions of roles that 
it, it was it was hard because we didn't um, we didn't know whether it was supposed to be like describing jobs or describing roles in in what the commission or the or the department does. Well, that can be of any assistance. <laughs> experience with that it would be great too to add to you know add to our agenda when this process starts some of the items that we think may want to we want to include yeah. we had come up the commission and come up with suggested changes to that part of the charter so i think we still have that yeah. around yeah and um have that some yeah let's see if i can find you know on can you can can you repeat that what you said of, uh, with regards to the charter? I couldn't hear you. Did you want Julie to repeat what she had said? Yeah, I could not hear what you said with regards to the charter. You said something. Someone said something with regards to the charter, and I just said, could you repeat that? Sure. The, so the Charter Revision Commission is being formed now to look at the charter to see about you know any changes or updates that need to be done. So if anybody is interested in participating in that process, they can let the First Selectman's Office know. Um, I don't know when they're starting, but they did announce that they're creating that commission. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Um, any other business okay anybody else anybody? okay we'll move on to old business uh veterans resource subcommittee here you are <laughs> okay So we're gonna to move to uh, agenda item number five, uh, considering the fact that uh, we're honored now with the steering uh, of First Selectman, William A. Gerber. Welcome First Selectman, it's great to have you here. Thank you for having me. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so uh, actually we had called you here to first of all congratulate you on your, uh, your election. Uh, and to sort of get a feeling from you as to how you see us supporting you in the town. And then perhaps we have some questions we could ask of you. Absolutely. Uh, so perhaps we could start with you giving us, first of all, a vision of how you see uh, the town moving forward, uh, what you'd like to see happen uh, as first selectmen, and then again, how we could be beneficial to you in that process. Thank you. Um, so I um, had a lot of things jumbling around in my head and a lot and things go in fits and starts. Um, some of the conversations, there's a lot going on, but um, one thing that I would love to see is a coordinated youth services bureau with, um, with um, and we, we've talked a lot about this yeah. and, um, with um, some coordination, you know, uh, between the schools, between um, between Julie um, and I mean, I know there already is, but um, um, you know, the police, uh, social worker, the um, um, therapy, therapy, yeah. juvenile review board. Um, et cetera, um, and, and Fairfield Cares. Um, and, um, you know, I have to talk to Cheryl Jones about what is going on, you know, some of the services provided in New Canaan. Um, and one of the things um, Cheryl informed me of is that they have an agreement with um, Silver Hill where they um, pay an annual fee. Um, Silver Hill contributes, um, um, their time, some, some of their time, so that they have a, a turnaround for mental health services uh, within, what, 48 hours or something like that. Um, uh, opioid settlement funds, we have not deployed those yet, but we could do something similar for um, addiction services. Um, 
and um, there are other options besides Silver Hill. So, you know, we should be talking to other providers. And I think that model is, is really interesting um, for, for both opioid you know, addiction and, and you know, just general mental health services. Um, just getting people outside, walking um, out in the fresh air, complete streets is a really big initiative. Um, for the town, um, we are, we just got a, a pretty nice grant for a Safe Streets for All grant. It's gonna allow us to hire one of the big planning firms to come in and do a plan for the town, um, a complete streets plan for the town um, with an eye on you know, people of all uh, ages and abilities and making sure there's connectivity, the ability to get around to, um, parks downtown, um, crossing streets without getting, you know, without feeling afraid to do so, things like that. And that may require um, bringing in somebody who concentrates that more, you know, from within. So we'll have a, a, a pretty big consulting project um, funded by the federal government and which we have to match 20% and um, so on on inside who's more of like an urban planning type person that will work with them to help implement a framework um, that we can then execute. It'll take many years, but, and, and it'll be expensive, but we, you know, we need to be able to um, capture whatever grant money there is, out, is out there. And there, there is a lot, but the better plan you have and the more you can articulate your vision, the um, more grant money you'll, they'll probably end up getting. Um, affordable housing is um, is a big priority. Um, I think we're prepared to use, I don't know how to, you know, use our balance sheet, I guess, um, use tax abatements to um, try to get more affordable units into development. So um, it's an expensive town to buy land in. <laughs> And for the deals um, that developers are looking at, um, in order for them to pencil out, sometimes you have to, you know, phase in their 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 taxes. Uh, something we haven't done much of. Uh, we've done some sort of special tax deals, but we haven't really used tax abatements here. Um, and we're looking at things like, you know, in the new Black Rock, Fairfield Black Rock, used to be Metro Center. Um, how can we get from a 12% affordable to maybe 18%? And it's really not likely that we could do that without a tax abatement program, which you know entails you're still paying, you're still getting extra taxes based on the incremental value over the land, but you fit that incremental value, you phase in the tax rates over, over time. Um, and um, one thing, Julie, you know, we've recently, be, recently been talking about is um, you know, we, we're going through um, a tax sale right now. And there are people that haven't paid taxes, real estate taxes for 10, 12 years. And it, it's really sad. <laughs> and, and, you know, when someone, you know, just puts their head in the sand, uh, if it's, some some people do it intentionally because they have so much money they don't really care. But a lot of people they avoid it's conflict avoidance. They don't want to think about it. But there's a state mandated interest rate which is eighteen percent, and that accumulates and accumulates to the point where you know if you let it go too long, you lose all the equity in your home. And we should intervene in that process after a, a short period of time and find out what's going on and then see if we can help get some financial or mental health or whatever type of counseling people need. And, and I know you've been talking to Dave, um, Kay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that would be a nice program that we could um, put in place to avoid having, you know, the equity in, in people's homes sort of disappear. Um, those are some major things, but um, would love to, or feedback. I have a question on that. I mean, I mean to interrupt. Do we ever enforce the liens on these? So if people are behind their, their taxes for whatever reason, 
and interest accrues 18% a year, and we let it go for 10 years, do we ever execute on it? We do. Uh, the town does. Um, you know, that the, there are some people um, who actually can afford to pay, and they just don't. And then there are some who just ignore it. And uh, every, every X amount of years, there's a, a sale, a foreclosure, foreclosure sale. What usually happens is if you start with 10 properties, five of them, like, actually, a lot of times it's estates and the kids just had forgotten that they just hadn't really paid attention. They find out and then they'll just go and pay the back taxes. But um, um, there are, are there are cases with people just ignoring the notices. But every, you know, whether it's every 10 years, every five years, there's a there's a tax sale. So uh, I don't know t the extent to which I know there are cases where we have been notified by somebody, hey, can you go to see if you can help this person out? Um, I know, um, you know, people um, in the economic development uh, department have gone into some homes and, and they'll help um, with money, you know, to, to repair things in the homes. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I have to do that. You know, I mean, it may just not be people who are arrogant, just people who can't afford to pay. Yeah, there are. Trying to get at it. So. There are a number of people who can't afford to pay. And they essentially, those liens would be enforced, you know, if if they do so. Um, and so it's better to get to the to them earlier. I mean, unless they don't care about having no money for, you know, their heirs. Would there be anybody working with them? I mean, I know reverse mortgages, not everybody. That's right, right, exactly. <laughs> and so there was one person who um, our tax uh, collector called and said, you know, these are your options. You know, the person had been avoiding the phone calls and finally they went ahead and they did uh, refund financed and um, they were grateful. They said, well, thank goodness I picked up the phone. But, you know, it is a problem. I mean, it's not a lot of homes. Uh, usually most of them don't get to 10 years, but even three years is kind of a, that is, doesn't make sense. And there are, there are people that probably, that may have been, um, that maybe could have applied for affordable, you know, a, a, a disabled tax relief, you know, senior disabled. Uh, you had mentioned safe streets for all, and I know there, as I recall, the Commission on Disabilities had done a survey. It was more in regard to curb cuts and accessibility and things like that, but I'm wondering if that information might be helpful uh, when you move forward with this. Sure, sure. So part of the, um, I'm sorry, but you were going to ask about the tax sales? I, I was going to ask about affordable housing. Oh, okay. I that. Go ahead. Yeah. So, um, well, we... We are now, we're trying to organize the complaint. You know, part of the whole Complete Streets process is organizing how to funnel all the complaints that come in. They come in through, we had a, there was a switch in the, in the website um, in, I think, October. And that complaint system was kind of broken. It didn't, it didn't work. And um, so we went back to the old one. It's called QAlert. You can, you can, over the web, you can, you know, put in co a complaint, but I also get emails. And part of the issue is like how to funnel and put into a database these complaints um, so that we know where people think the problem areas are. And part of it is, you know, you hire the experts who go out and actually drive around. They say, these are problem areas. I mean, some of them are very, very obvious. And then anything that you have from a survey should be incorporated into um, that assessment. So one of my comments about our questions about the affordable housing is um, one of the discussion points we had was senior affordable housing. Yeah. And um, I know we're coming very close to the moratorium being reached and that, I don't know a lot about this, but that the builders get so many points for affordability it, depending on how many units they put into the apartment. And one of the concepts that came up or comments was, could they be getting extra points if they allocated it for senior affordable housing? 
and what's happening? How do we push that forward as a human service commission? I, I well, the irony is you get less points for senior affordable, much less, um, because what they what the, the law is encouraging, like families, and you know, so um, that would be a really good thing to even that out, and um, and um, that would be a discussion we should have jointly with um, our state delegation because they should change the law to give more points to the senior housing. Because we're, they have to leave town because they can't afford right. to stay here. Right. And so, you know, who's addressing that? Well, I mean, I would love to build senior affordable housing. We don't have much of that, very, very little. Um, and, um, but we don't have a lot of land either. So there are places you could think where senior affordable housing would really be nice. Um, part of that would involve building some more sewers and sewer systems, stuff like that. But um, yes, I did say that on record. Oh, I had no idea you said it on record. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was a comment made in this group. But there are areas that I think would be really nice to have senior affordable housing. And um, you know, you're somewhat limited by where the sewers go. So if it requires a little bit of an extension to a place where you could have, you know, in a nice atmosphere. Town is buying land, open space land. Could that be used for something more suitable for this? Well, we have been buying mainly conservation land. Um, um, but the town certainly could do that. I mean, we should we should buy land for this, and and we and you know it could be held short term too. You could buy we could buy land and then park find a partner to build senior affordable housing yes. and not keep it on our on our books. You know, because it doesn't look like times are getting better. No, I well, it really doesn't. You know, it doesn't appear to be. Like we're looking forward to a better time because, you know, young people are getting married now. I have a granddaughter getting married and like, where are these kids going to live? Where are they, be able, are they going to be able to stay in their own town? It doesn't look that way. And, and then of course, the cost of real estate is going up. So that makes well, yeah, when you say a better time, it depends from, I really, it's getting so bad because this market is so hot right. that yeah. you can't yeah. afford to buy land. Exactly. Uh, you know what, too? I wondered on um, on Reef Road in Fairfield, down um, by Bud's Market. Yeah, there's that house. Yeah, across the street. New house of renting. Is that what you're talking about? No, not a house. It's it's the street, a side street, and it was um, um, like army housing. What is that now? So are you talking about, so the army housing is deed restricted um, housing um, for, for, you know, families. So, you know, it's, it's less expensive, but it's deed restricted so that um, you, you, um, you can't, um, you like, you won't get a lot of equity appreciation in the home, but it's restricted to people of a certain income level. The community development office did that they got that all together um because yeah, i remember mm -hmm. many years ago affordable housing i'm not sure i'm really equating it the right way but on the state level i understand now that you cannot cannot make say senior housing because pine tree was senior housing period now it's not. And the state, I believe, took that designation away so that when Pine Tree was rebuilt, um, it is a, more of a family thing because there's two and three bedrooms now. And maybe not three, but one and two bedrooms now. Well, you can do it. I, well, I, I'll, I'll check on what you're saying. I think it's just a lot of it is what you can, how, you know, the, the tax benefits that you can get be limited for and, and certainly the affordable housing points are limited um under 8-30g right. for a full senior because they want you know 
part of the problem is, you know, they want people to come, come to the workforce that aren't necessarily bankers. And <laughs> so, um, and they, you know, they want people to be able to live and work in, um, in, in towns and, um, and they, and, but it really is beneficial for a town to keep their seniors as, so it's, you know, I think they should have both. 22. Are those houses rented or are they owned? Uh, they're owned. Oh, they are. Yeah, those houses are owned. So people have been selling, if we're talking about the same, the army site. Yeah, so as they've been selling, the town's been taking them back. But they're um, going to, um, they're partnering with Habitat. Oh, really? To build, you know, do like more, there will be more units there. That could be quite a community if they were all taken down. And most yeah. of them are not even kept but up. They can't force you're people. They're deed restricted, though. So yeah. they're, 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 are they limited to people who have been in the service? No, no, they're deed restricted to how much you can sell, like the, how much you can sell them for. So um, you can only rent to people under a certain, or you can only sell them to people under a certain income level. And then if, if it doubles in you know, value, you can't sell it for the market value, you sell it for like, a, maybe there's some appreciated, but it's minimal, yeah. So it's really provided, you're not, you're not, it's not generational wealth creation, it's really just having a house to live in a place like Fairfield. So, Bill, with the charter opening, it sounds like then the youth service bureau part is something that you want to look at. Definitely. So, thank you for coming, Bill. Um, and thrilled to hear you say that um, you're looking at the youth service bureau and strengthening that and making that coordinated with the town. It's wonderful. Our commission can support that in any way and help with that process. Not that I'm speaking on behalf of the commission, but I'm inviting that discussion <laughs> for the commission to consider. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, I think, Julie, we've had some interesting discussions. Terrific. Um, so thank you. And then also, also thanks for sharing that senior housing is reflected differently when we're getting our points and we're considering what the town has done. I, can send you, I did not know that. Yeah, that's all in the 8-30 the G law. You know, um, it has the points laid out. It's very strange. But that's something else that we could explore and speak to our, our legislators about perhaps sure. that on a future yeah. agenda. Yeah. Well, we talked about maybe encouraging. That would be terrific. Yeah. So have a coordinated voice Absolutely. to bring that forward. In regard to veterans, uh, you know, we also feel that we should be supporting veterans as much as we possibly can. Uh, and we're looking actually at developing or actually begun a subcommittee uh, to support veterans. Are there any thoughts that you have in terms of how we could expand that or ideas that we should be working toward? Um, I have not put a lot of thought. I mean, I, I was thrilled about the disabled veteran um, tax relief. I actually don't know what the impact on our tax rules is going to be, but that just passed. But it's it's not, you know, we we held a ceremony for certain veterans, but um, in terms of like tax relief or extra uh, benefits, I have not put a ton of thought into that. I'd love to hear suggestions. Oh, well, actually, Joe's going to head up or uh, is in the process of heading up a subcommittee on that. So hopefully, we have a lot of veterans. Yeah, I know exactly. That we feel we really need to support them as much as possible. Any other questions? Feel free. Let's have a different topic. Uh, this group has been involved with a lot of stuff with public transportation, and the last meeting, Julie brought a uh, very, I thought, very impressive woman in from Connecticut Rides, Sarah Roy, talking about. It. <laughs> I know Sarah very well. I think you like. I get emails from Sarah every. Well, day. One thing you <laughs> brought up that I was a little surprised about was funding. And she indicated, at least to the group, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that Bridgeport, although it's the largest city in Connecticut, greater Bridgeport area does not get as much funding as Hartford and New Haven does. I don't know if, if you're aware of that. And to me, I mean, I think that's, if there's something we can deal with as far as working with our, our reps and our senators, I yeah. think this should be one of them because why shouldn't the greater Bridgeport area at least get as much as Hartford and New Haven? And I, I didn't know if, if being part of Complete Streets 
that this was something that had come up when you were it, discussing this. It came up this morning. I, I went mm -hmm. to a, um, so do you know the, uh, the Metrocog? Um, so I went to a Metrocog meeting um, and we were going through the different um, regional uh, councils and the Hartford Regional Council is actually a lot bigger than the Greater Bridgeport um, one, um, but um, some of them are smaller. And you know, a lot of the trans the, the government likes regional transportation initiatives, but we should be we should be getting more, and um, um, we need to coordinate better. Um, I mean, we. They, they help us with, um, the, they took the lead on, you know, in the stop and shop sort of that, um, where the liquor store is, where all the carts are left, you know, um, by Ash Creek. Um, they're taking the lead on designing, um, completely re redesigning that area so that people could walk and cross. And, um, and um, they... Um, I mean, they can't, we, we, we have a federal grant for complete streets, but they can help us, um, they can, can consult on that for us. Um, but you're right, I, I think um, we may have been shortchanged a little. And, and I'm a, a little concerned, you know, I've been reading about um, recently, um, the friend um, who's on the um, State Transportation um, Commission um, was talking about the bus stop initiative many millions of dollars statewide. And I think we only got two in Fairfield and covered, you know, covered bus stops and you can drive along and see people huddle mm -hmm. under buildings in the rain. I think we should have more covered bus stops on Black Rock and on, uh, on Pleasure Road. Well, we, we had talked about that with them actually. And it was not a matter of installing the bus stops. It was a matter of maintaining the bus stops. Right. Like, and no barrier. Replacing them. We would probably do. have to maintain. Fairfield would have to agree to maintain. But we we would maintain them for sure. Yeah, but it was, that was specifically said. Then. Yeah, I mean, we've been yeah. kind of one of the things we're noodling about that, that particular mm -hmm. thing. We see people on milk crates waiting for a bus. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, yes. you know, it, but anyway, I mean, I just. Well, sort of, yeah, you're right. And I think, didn't we talk about, um, or just talking about something? Um, is the Greater Bridgeport uh, Transportation Authority does it feel like there's a lot of options uh, with them in Fairfield? So we did this. Yeah, yeah. That's we, did we did talk about. So yeah. Joe is um, part of the age friendly and is heading up the transportation one. Right. So that's a, that we had talked about that just about that. There's not a lot of flexibility or. or new and improved options to encourage them. And the bus runs themselves don't seem to be benefiting the greater number of people that could benefit if the routes were a little bit different, right? Mm -hmm. They're trying to get like Fearful New or Sacred Heart to share some of their- That's when we were talking yeah. about it, yeah. And, um, they were worried about the liability exactly. of picking people up. Right. Maybe that's something you could work on. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe that, that, that is, Along, along a route, for at least from the schools. So, yeah. yeah. Something that issue. <laughs> it's a small one, but it's. I think it's meaningful. Under all the um, the throughway under underpasses. underpasses, none of the lights are on in Fairfield, and oh. and um, I, I think that's ridiculous because of um, mostly the kids, and the longest one is on um. Uncle Road from the high school and it's long and it's very dark. And, um, you know, I, all I can picture is a cute little girl, you know, walking underneath and it's very dark and I don't think it's a good thing. Yeah, uh, our underpasses are, yeah, they're not, uh, they're, not lit. they're not lit, but we have a Real problem under the North Benson underpass where the sidewalk ends halfway through the underpass. Um, looking into that, I think that's something we can't easily fix because it's too narrow. But we're we're looking into to that, and of course the flooding issues are a big big problem. But that's compl very very expensive and complicated, and the um, the state. Um, 
people is is involved in that process. So. Is there potentially any solution to that? I mean, uh, well, <laughs> they're looking. I mean, right now, um, we don't know. Yeah, there is a solution to dig 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 it up and put in bigger drainage. But um, another thing is actually. Metro North is looking at actually raising the tracks, <laughs> which may take um, may take a long time. So they're looking at starting at um, the area and then working their way down. Uh, they need to do that in order to um, increase the speed. Another small point, but a few people actually, more than one person has come to me about this, I guess, because I know that I'm on the commission. Um, it's regarding the uh, the burn the trail by the old the old dam trail <laughs> where it comes to a sort of an end. It's a beautiful walk in the marsh, and uh, they felt these are elderly people, some with uh, orthopedic devices. <laughs> they felt it's really important to be able to have a place to sit at the end of the the burn so they could sit down and rest and then return. Because they said without that, there's no way that they could you know walk that trail and they feel that, uh, you know, it's a beautiful trail and it's good exercise. And I'd like to be sure that it's accessible to people who are elderly. Um, uh, yeah, if you could it's tell it's me it's where on the trail, like um, at the very been, end where, like so, where dead I mean, ends. I don't know if any of you have been there, but what, what they explained to me is at the end of the trail, I guess it comes to a point. And it comes to a point at the water. the water. Can I just jump in on that? That trail is closed still. Is that closed? Uh, yeah, because they found contaminated film. So, oh yeah, that's your na your neighbor. It is, yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, they're cleaning that out. Um, so, I mean, I haven't been on the trail. In Thank God. <laughs> but is is that actually closed now? So it's, it's closed. Yeah, up to the health department, I think. Yeah, yeah it's part of it is is closed because they found the contaminated, contaminated film was film, used. Really? Um, the other. Uh, wrinkle is uh, apparently whenever they put it in, it was never actually permanent. So, uh, <laughs> you heard that too, yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure my old damn road, that, that area, right off the marsh, yeah, that right beautiful off. trail. Yes. So it's closed, huh? Well, I don't I know if the whole thing. You might be able to enter up on the side. On, I, yeah, I think sure. by the condos, it's wherever it goes around, maybe by the ball field you could hop on. Yeah, yeah. by the ball field. Is, uh, when I had walked it, that's, that's the way that I've done it. I didn't realize there's no uh, no benches. Yeah. Right. It's called the Frank Wright Trail, I think. Yes. Yeah. Rice? Yeah. Right. But it's by the old, in the, in the marsh. By the old, it's, it's actually not in the marsh, because at the end of it, uh, you know, people kayak and you just sort of stay, look over, uh, you know, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's really amazing. It's really, really uh, so of, I was aware of it, but then a few people came to me, I think, knowing that I was on the commission, saying, well, you know, we're concerned about this because we're elderly. We love to walk that trail, but we can't walk all the way there and all the way back without resting. Right. Yeah. I've had a hard time there in the heat. Okay. Yeah, and you're not elderly. <laughs> Uh, so uh, that just proves the point, I suppose. But anyways, bring it to your attention because it was brought to my attention. If you could check on that, that would be appreciated. Mm -hmm. Who is that? Could it be accessible, like an accessible trail wide? And um, yeah. yeah, unless they're able to navigate the trail, it's just that they can't walk out there and walk back without resting. Did Petrina have a question? Yeah, I think Petrina had a question. Oh, go ahead. I yes, I do. I have a question and a comment. I just want to thank you um, for selectmen for coming out um, to the meeting and I'm excited about the youth services, the possibility of, you know, looking more into um, and collaborating with the different agencies to try to involve um, youth services within the town. I think it's greatly needed and I will make myself available to participate in and be a part of that. So. Thank you. I just want to, you know, commend you on that, and thank you, Loretta, uh, for also bringing that up. Thanks. And the other question is: earlier, someone mentioned, and I couldn't quite hear it, about a complaint line calling into. Can you go over that again? Is, is there some type of? So, line? if you go to the town website um, on the homepage, I think at the bottom you can see something where you can. Um, 
you can log a suggestion or complaint and it takes you to um, it, it takes you to uh, something called Q alert uh, and there's a drop down menu for um, what department it relates to and then when you um, you write in your issue and it will go to the right department and then oh. they it, it's set up now it went away for a little while we brought it back but it's set up so that when they go out and check it out whenever there's an update you'll be copied you know you'll be notified of the progress okay all right thank you for explaining that i just discovered the other day that there's actually a detector assigned for quality of life too at the fairfield police department so i was excited about that because there are some concerns in my neighborhood so I was able to reach out right. to him uh, detective but, Pucci. and we and definitely on the Q alert we I prefer do you do you get Q alerts Sheila yeah so I prefer people log them that way so that the record like the data is easier to consolidate if it goes through that that method because you end up you can create a you know, a, a log, um, as opposed to people emailing in just directly to me, then it may just be in a file, but it won't be part of the log. We, we have to create a system or enter it into a log. So I'm, I'm okay. hoping over time to get more and more people to use the Q-Alert, but uh, it's easier to keep track of. Well, thank you. Thank you. In regard to the Youth Services Bureau or Commission that you want to start, uh, would they also be looking at somehow uh, working with seniors and youth in terms of working together? Uh, no, I hope so. <laughs> you know, it's a, the early stages of looking at, you know, comparing what other towns are doing and trying to figure that out, but I, th I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I, I think so too. Great. Senior mental health is a real, it's, 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 it is exploding and un, unrecognized, under, under recognized and diagnosed. Um, and it's it's truly a, a, an epidemic right now that um, isn't really being discussed. So, sort of into the break. Absolutely, yeah. Any other questions for our first look? Again, thank you very thank much you. for coming. So much. Thanks for having me. Thanks for this. We hope you'll stop by again. Uh, and, uh, you know, I will. Um, but if you ever want me here, um, just tell me if, if it's a good meeting with the space in the in the agenda. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Take care. You too. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, we could uh, move on to old business. I think we were old. Sorry. Business. I'm yeah. sorry. Did we finish new business? I believe we are, but if you have other well, new I, business. Based on our conversation just now, okay. I'd like to, can we, may I ask that we continue it, please? Sure, absolutely. Thank you. Um, Julie had mentioned um, that if we're interested in uh, bring, bringing up information to the revised, the, re, the re brought up again, uh, Town Charter Commission. Um, prior to the last time the Charter Commission was being held, this commission discussed the Youth Service Bureau and asking to revisit that. And I wonder if this is an opportune time for us as a commission to bring this up together and to put forward information to the new Charter Commission to consider so that way our voice is heard because it is it can be, um, I'm thrilled as, as I'm sure all of you know, that, um, that this is being considered and looked at, but to have our commission have a voice to say that this is something we endorse and we support and we'd like to give that positive look. It can empower the first selectman to make something happen um, and also have our voice heard. So, so are you suggesting though, that we make some recommendations to the commission? Yes, as a, as a commission to the commission. Okay, um, so we would need to have some type of mechanism to do that. Uh, can we do, do that as, as part of the agenda item on that? Meeting? We can. I mean, I, I could certainly dig up our old notes from our previous discussion. That's probably part of our minutes as well, but I'm happy to go through my notes because we, we did discuss it already. And we, I think we even had language um, that we can put so why forward. Don't we, why don't we include that for the next month if we can as an agenda item? Okay. That information to us. Perfect. Thank you. This is the time. 
Do we have time? Is mm -hmm. next month going to be too late? Yeah. No, they haven't even opened it, but this this is the time. This is the time. You're saying it's a good time to do it. It's the time to do this. If I can recall, part of that conversation was to include the word youth services under the human services. Yes. Right. And at the time it was Parks and Rec and there was still is, right? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I, I don't, I'm not the youth sector, but I mean, I just, I remember that that, that was a That's exactly what it was. It was to, to bring youth, there's no youth in right. our human services commission and to give the language of that. And um, oversight and everything else. Yes. And um, right. Yeah, yeah there's, and there's a lot of other a lot of come up with language, but you would suggest an expanded language. I would that love we to didn't see. go into, and I think that's really what you're getting at, Laura, is that perhaps, and I think we, we, we did come up with suggested language for the charter revision. Yes. Uh, Loretta had come up with even uh, expanded language specifically on the Youth Service Bureau, and maybe that's the thing that we need to discuss. That would be discussed because we, we have a we have an administration that's that's interested in. In hearing this, and I think so, I still have that stuff. You still have it, terrific, and I have to go through. And I can dig it out and probably give it, send it on to three. And I, I did give Bill kind of what all the <coughs> are doing because he did ask for that because I come from New Canaan. I've been there. I've been in the Youth Service Bureau, um, so I did give him a lot of information as to different ways to look at it. So. And I, and I did um, just in terms of, the, and I could also put it because. <coughs> when I submitted as an individual, not as a commissioner, other information to the town charter commission as well. So I could also oh, pull. You did, okay. I certainly did, yes. I felt, yes. Did they, ex I was just curious, did they accept it? Uh, I don't. They accept it, well, it's not part of the town. It never made it to the town charter, so. Did it make it to the one that we voted on? No, it was not, that, okay. we, as, that we as a commission voted on? No, no, the one that the when town we, voted on. That the town didn't, no, it was not included. Was not, okay. I think that, um, it was not included. Very good point. Second, for people to serve on that commission, the charter on the, on the charter I, commission. I'm so <laughs> Very popular. Yeah. Okay, any other new business? Hey, no, Linda, I'd like to ask you, what do you feel is the cause of this? Um, Surgeon um, mental health. Well, the pandemic obviously escalated it, but there was before that. You know what I mean? So it, it's mostly what we're seeing, what I'm seeing as a practitioner is a lot of anxiety and depression. A lot of the borderline personality and underlying personality disorders become more emerged or in the front on the front burner as we age, because you lose those. You lose those um, social appropriate cues, not even with dementia, just in general, to kind of check yourself. You know what I mean? And so over life, people have been able to compensate and scale back and not talk or say something or act a certain way. But as you age, you lose that filter essentially. And so we're finding more bipolarism, schizo not schizophrenia, but bipolar disease increase in the elderly. The anxiety and depression is off the charts. This is older people? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, is it the suicide? Very young. Suicide. Yeah, but I mean, you know, as far as, you know, I, I work more in the elder sector, you know, and so we're seeing like people presenting to assisted livings that have all kinds of mental health issues. And, or to, we see, we're seeing people present to the hospital for a, a bladder infection, not, I want to use bladder infection, um, a broken arm. And um, we give them a little bit of an opioid for the broken arm. And all of a sudden they're having all these mental health issues. And everyone's like, oh, it's the opi opioid. And it's not, you know what I mean? And so it unmasks itself. Wow. But they're not in the hospital long enough for us to treat it because we have to discharge people. They're admitting diagnosis was a broken shoulder, yes. not underlying borderline personality disorder or depression mm -hmm. or suicidal ideation. And unless they're saying, you know, so it's really a crisis. And so these poor assisted living facilities um, where people are paying eight to $10,000 a month are being bombarded with all of these mental health issues. And so it's it's really, it's a crisis. Sad. Any other new business? We'll move on to uh, the business and the Veterans Resource Subcommittee, Joe. Sure. Um, just kind of an update. Um, when and I, I mentioned this to uh, Bob as well, I did approach the two fellow, the two people who were there. Actually, two new people. 
Uh, one is Mike Cardoza and Mary Harris is her name. Uh, both of them are from the state of Connecticut, dealing with uh, advocacy and assistance for veterans benefits. And I told them that we established a subcommittee and we were interested in uh, hearing from them. And they both were very interested in coming to one of our meetings. Right. So I told them I'd get back to them. Um, I knew that it's not, it's not going to be appropriate. Uh, July, they're going to be talking to someone in Stanford. In August, we don't have a meeting. So I don't know, Julie, we have to push it back in September or October. But if that's okay with the group, then uh, maybe we should go. And they seem very interested in coming, especially Mary Harris. I'm uh, more enthusiastic than Mike, but um, they're both very busy. But I think it'd be good for this group to know exactly what it is that they do, and maybe they'll have thoughts, Marty, as far as where they think that we could be helpful as far as what are their positions. They are actually, I think, they're veteran service officers is what the official title is, and they and are both of them. And what they are with the state of Connecticut and uh, the Department of Veterans Affairs. And it's, as I said, it's the Office of Advocacy and Assistance. So they deal specifically with veterans. Are they dealing out with spousal benefits? No. Probably because it's part of the A lot of spouses don't know they qualify. Yeah. 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 Spouses of deceased veterans. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, they, they, I think we be very interesting because I think both of them sounded very interested. Sounds great. So, we do one on September agenda. They're available. Yeah. All right, I'll ask if September would be okay. Okay. That works for you, All right. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, Carolyn? Uh, <clears throat> the first selectman stole my thunder. <laughs> 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 You're done. <laughs> the only other thing was that. Um, the nurse for the school system, uh, she gave a report and it was pretty, you know, everything seemed to have worked out fairly well. But other than that, that that's really it. It was the opioid settlement and the working with um, Silver Hill because that's attached to St. B's. I was surprised to see that that was still going because Hartford Healthcare has just been... Giving and taking, basically, for the last few years. So I, I was glad to hear that. But that's really it. Thank you. Uh, ARPA friendly. Um, just to follow, we, um, we had another meeting on June 10th. And I think, as I mentioned, um, Julie brought uh, Sarah Roy from Connecticut Rise. And I thought she was great. Thank you for bringing her, Julie. And she was. Uh, right on, I mean, uh, talking about promoting um, sustainable and active transportation. That's one of the goals of the Department of Energy, Department of Transportation, excuse me. And um, it sounds like they do a lot of interaction with groups like, like us and, and so forth. So I think hopefully we'll be able to work with her on, on some of our projects. I think one of the things I mentioned that she mentioned was the fact of us not getting our share of the funding, which I think is something to be worth while tracking down, um, but she, she, she was very good. She gave different uh, examples of how they work with different towns, setting up and encouraging uh, people to use mass transportation. So um, in any way, I, I thought she did a very, uh, an excellent presentation, Julia. Thank you for, for bringing her. Um, I won't say anything with the housing domain. Uh, I think they're still moving along, and of course, Brenda is doing this stuff for social participation. But uh, one other thing I did want to mention is that uh, Julie and uh, Brenda did come up with a, a communication piece for the places of worship that was sent out to all the places of worship to get the word out that this thing is moving. So trying to expand the, uh, the base for which we're, we're working on. And other than that, um, I guess we have our next meeting on July 8th. Is yeah. that great? Okay. And so again, if any of you are interested in uh, coming and, and speaking, please, please do. Where is the meeting on? Is that going to be at the Senior Center? It is. Okay. At the Senior Center. Would Bill's suggestion that, well, for us to look at, as we look at um, not getting point, not getting 
equivalent points for having um, affordable housing for seniors compared to other 30, 30G. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that would fall under the um, your group or is this something that we as a commission would want to explore? I mean, I'm, I'm already thinking about ways of tackling this and how to gather information and present it to our legislators with the goal of bringing right something forward for the spring. I knew about this because, and I'm sure that er, I, yeah, I'm sure he knows about it too. Oh, I, yeah. I just did. Yeah, yeah, I was surprised when I heard it, but I knew uh, going back two years ago when they first started the whole thing, independent of what they're doing with the affordable housing. Yeah, so that issue has been out there. So but, to answer but your question, instance, has anybody really pushed it and tried to understand it? Right. Uh, so the age friendly is not really the-, the I'm, I'm asking, it was a question. I don't know if it should be. Yeah, I'm wondering if, I, I think you said, you had suggested having the state delegation come to this commission to have a conversation, you know, to come and hear about our concerns, that would be a great opportunity to have a conversation with and them about that. So if, I think that's terrific to do that. Um, and then as we explore that, sometimes I found it very helpful when I've done my homework prior to having those meetings and whether I write a full white paper or I just have a fact, a one pager fact sheet, but something like that for us to present, would that be beneficial so that way they have we could either do it after we meet with them and hear from them what their feedback is, or we could have it when they come and we could present this a fact sheet in terms of the number of housing to find out how much housing is in Fairfield for seniors, how much is for um, families, what percentage, how would this affect our numbers? We're getting from the state versus other regions. And it's just it's a question of do we want to do some homework before we ask them to come? And I'm thinking of the of the calendar. So if we were asking them to introduce a bill for modification, that would be in January. So we want to, and we want to have them have a plan by November, December. So, so we I mean, want to have a, a timeline. I mean, I would think at the point that they come here, it would be great if we had that handout and we'd be able to discuss it with them at the time. Uh, I don't I know. Something, you know, take them one to yeah. get some work done, invite them, you know, in September we're having veterans, maybe we to October, unless we swap September and October and had veterans come. Whichever, yeah, either way. Uh, but I do think that we're, when we have them here and we have it in front of them, that's when they're going to look at it. And then there's a better chance if they take it with them, they're going to be able to advocate for us. So we probably would want to have the focus of them coming be senior and disabled housing, I would think. So uh, you know, it's up to, up to you whether you want to do a subcommittee, but if we have a very, uh, that narrow focus instead of the broad, what do you, what have you done for us lately? Right. No, I think that if we're, and if we're able to give them, this is, yeah. I find that they'd be very beneficial, that when they're I able to hold totally their hand agree. under something, they can give it to their yes. aide and say, exactly. let me make a bill out of this. They can, they can pass they it around. Hear from us. If you give them something, then they're going to work on they it. They can pass it around to yeah. the, to the chairs of those so housing committees. So we need to get that information together. And all the numbers should be in the moratorium. Exactly. And an affordable housing commission's done a ton of work. Right. So maybe well, maybe a quick short term little group. Maybe we would want the senior advocates to work with them because they probably have a lot of information on these points, plus the legislative efforts. I forget the gentleman who said it, who was the legislative person. Mm -hmm. there, was, there was a gentleman who was very impressive, was very on top of. Uh, legislation that is involved in this. So maybe we want to talk to them first. Absolutely. We don't need to give them they, much they better. The let's company. just yeah. let's just highlight, you know, amplify their, their voice if they've got it already done. And they may. I mean we just need to find out where we can yeah. locate that information. Yeah. Um, yeah. good idea. There's no reason to recreate the wheel. Talk to one of the legislators and see if they would have an idea of where you might get information. Basically, looking for comparative information regarding affordable housing and support from the state. Right. That's what a, a subcommittee could get could pull together and then have senior advocates come in and then be ready to go with, with that with a recommendation. Sure. Mm -hmm. well, we, we need to move on it fairly quickly, though. Yeah, that's for sure. So fast. <laughs> so fast. <laughs> I've already got some. Uh, yeah, people. I, I am so overwhelmed right now with my, 
I would love to be participant of one of seven people who do it and, and ask, but I can't take a leadership role in that. I'm, I'm also not, and I could be totally wrong about this, but I'm not certain that they don't have that information already. I mean, because they're supporting, right. you know, the state and the various regions of the state. So they must have some documentation in regard to how much each region gets. So it would just be a question of getting to the legislative office uh, and finding that out. I mean, you know, perhaps contact the legislator and ask them. I mean, and but then like a, a group. I, I mean, I hesitate because well, then this is falling on Loretta to do all. But you you want a real vision from this commission saying we, this is what we endorse and and get that all that information and do that homework to get that paper to recommend. For example, something that I mean, I, I'm also, I'm sorry, I'm just so stretched. Um, but what I, what I can do, and if someone, if others can, Joe, if you could bring it to your group, um, come up with an outline, like some bullet points, these are the questions. And then we just fill in the blanks with the data that they collect from this information. And then we just put it together into a, into a one, I'm thinking of a one pager as opposed to a full white. Yeah, I mean, if we if we could do that, then I don't see why we can't get a legislator to then bring that up to Hartford and say, can we get the information in regard to this? We've got a wonderful team in town. Yeah. So, yeah. and I guess we can text. Yeah. So, right. Exactly. I mean, that should not be a problem to decide who we want to ask, but it shouldn't be a difficult uh, thing to accomplish. So, it's really just a question of coming up with the questions we want to ask. And maybe we could have one brief meeting where we could do that and then present it to whomever we decide we want to present it to saying, please get back to us within whatever time frame or with this information. Not to the legislators, that. but to put to the committees that already have the data. I would say there's definitely you should have the senior advocates first. Right. And this they will them. they will give you a lot of background information and maybe if nothing else for it, they would let us know who we should look at further. Uh, because they've gone down this path. But they already have a report and and it'd be good to hear what advocacy they've already done. It's hard to imagine that they haven't already and the resistance the 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 advocacy. what that was about. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they have a lot to learn from their experience. Yeah, I mean it's it's, it's lot, just you know? but uh, yeah but something like this uh, it doesn't make sense but uh, as far as scoring but I'm sure there's a history, legislative history on this. Thing. And it could be, it doesn't have to be just different points, just like a percentage or something, a balance. I mean, I can understand. Yeah, we'll have to see. Well, yeah, so it's a question of the populations and the populations of the elderly in the various regions and how the dollars are allocated based on the population. And are we getting our fair share? Oh, I, I'm... I thought the focus, this is what, this is probably why you should have a smaller group talking about it. You know, I thought the focus was to try to get to change the to change 830G to include, to include senior, not about fair share, but so that we get credit for right. senior housing. Because right now we're getting dinged for insufficient um, low income housing. Right. So if we get credit for our senior housing, that's, that's also low credit. That's, that's what. Yeah, but. But ultimately, what we're looking for is increased dollars. That's not what this is. No, that's I not. That's not what I'm talking about, at least. Okay. okay. Well, I mean, I'm seeing that as being beneficial to expand the opportunities for seniors to get the housing that they need in this region. Yes, but I don't think it's this. Yeah. But eight thirty G is not a. That's not what that was about. It wasn't. Am I am I correct in understanding? So eight thirty G is that every municipality is required to have a certain percentage of affordable housing. But didn't we, aren't we almost at our moratorium, if not already met our moratorium for 8-30G right now? Yes. Um, so if we've met our moratorium, um, then right now, any of the applications that come forth don't have to have the 30% affordable but, housing, But remember, right? it's a moratorium. Right, which four means years, four or five it years. is not forever. Right. So I don't think it's uh, a stale issue. I think it's still worthwhile. Oh yeah, going. no, I just but but the, at least we have temporary. If you want to say temporary relief, like yeah, we can uh, catch our breath. It's all that it is. It's about it. I think it's worthwhile, the writer, and I, I do think you should have you should have the senior advocates be the first one that we talk to about, it. and so, then we then go on and figure out who else you want to uh, talk talk to about it. Because the more informed you are, I mean, better off to be able to make a good argument to the legislature. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, we. Yeah. 
but we, I think if we're, if we have the information, we can present it to whichever legislator or legislators uh, that we decide to call in. I think they could take it and run with it and we can get the results that we're looking for. Uh, so do you want it, do you want to set it up as a smaller group or do you want it? I mean, we can, we could, I mean, I don't know if we need to have a lot of meetings for it. Uh, I think we just need to get the information collated. Are we, are we allowed to have, we have a subcommittee, are we allowed to email each other? And so we could just have some email exchanges and it shouldn't be tons of work to put together. Yeah, be careful, I went to the thing on subcommittees or meetings. You have right, to that's, have that's my question in terms of minutes, in terms of, but we're allowed to communicate by email. Because you're not, they're not the full commission. Is my understanding. So, but if it's everybody on it, then it's right it constitutes a meeting. So, but if it's a subcommittee, then we have, have to have minutes for a subcommittee. subcommittee. So, let's not have a subcommittee. Have a subcommittee. Who just wants to have a little chat? I'll we'll have a little bit of yelling. Well, we need more people because I can have a chat. <laughs> uh, <but laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like A with a capital A. But couldn't we uh, just as, as a start on this do what? what you mentioned is maybe in uh, either September or October, we asked the senior advocates to come to our meeting and talk about the specific issue. That's too late. She's talking about trying yeah. to change the language or something for the, uh, July? Yeah, that July? Okay, that's July for us to chat with Fairfield senior advocates. And is that what you're talking about? So are we suggesting having the senior advocates come to our commission meeting or having a subcommittee? I, I mean, I don't. I don't. It gives us time. That mission. I wouldn't have a problem with senior advocates coming here in July. I, I, I think we all have an interest. And that would probably give us our bullet points, quite honestly. Right. A good part of our bullet points in July. Come in July. Okay. And then after they come, we can start. Then we determine next steps, which might be. Contact yeah, even, the legislator or legislators come to our following meetings and give them their give up. They give them our questions ahead of time. We're saying, yeah, after the July, after they come, have no, them. They, come. This is the legislator. This is no, the, the senior, senior advocates. advocates. We don't want to give them our list of questions before they come. I think it's better yeah. helpful. Sure. Or maybe if we're the three of us can email yeah. us mm -hmm. questions and put something. Joe, would you be comfortable with bumping the VA back to say October? If, if the day, if we well, the day. If just let me know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So veterans will be coming in October then. They have flexibility. Yeah. Gwen, would you be interested in participating in that? I'm sorry. Would you be interested in participating? In the senior housing questions? Yeah. And if you can email me, keep me on that email chain, I appreciate it. Anything else under age friendly? Top of you, Marty. Oh, is that going to be yeah. a quorum? That's too many people. Oh, too many. Yeah, get somebody okay. off. Okay. Have to well, kick me off. Four is a quorum for us, so I think yeah. So I think we have to keep it to three. Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> You're at plumb out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so either if I'm copying. Well, you can tap in for me or, if you want. I don't know. You've yeah. been on the commission. If I'm like, copying, we can forward to you. Sort of, yeah, it would be forwarded or copied. So can, yeah, an individual oh, email. Yeah. Forward to you separately. Okay, yeah. sure. Just okay. not on the group. Sure. Okay. No, nothing. I, well, I, I, Brenda isn't here, but she is doing a lot of work on the social participation part of the um, project. So I'm sure the next meeting will just that. I'll tell you better than I can. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, department updates. Um, so we are having our ribbon cutting for the adult outdoor fitness playground oh, on the ground. Yes. Really excited yeah, about that. Right. Yeah. yeah, July eighth. If anybody's interested, I'll make sure you get the invitation. It's at one thirty on a Monday. And it's horrible timing, but the uh. commissioner on aging is coming. The um, state person who's in charge of senior centers is, is coming. The state delegation. Selectman. So we're really excited about that. And we're working with, um, we're meeting with, there's nothing decided yet, but we're meeting with the Tucker Fund about plantings for that area. So we're very, very excited about that. We are um, 
down one staff member social services, a part-time social worker, so we're in the process of interviewing with our social worker. Okay, great, right. thank you very much. Any other questions from the floor? If not, we'll let you take a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank you all very much. This is a wonder off the record now, right?